Hi, I'm Dr. Jennifer Bird. I'm a biblical scholar and I happen to care quite a bit about what people do with what they find in the Bible. I've been doing a series of videos on things that are attributed to Jesus or related to Jesus that I think make a lot more sense when we read them through an economic and political lens as compared to what is typical, which is a spiritual lens. I'm not saying that the Gospels weren't about spirituality, I'm saying many people are taught to misunderstand what Jesus was about and to misunderstand a lot of things he says because they're not reading through these lenses of economics and politics. So one of the more surprising things to me to discover then that helps to show that this is what's going on from the very beginning of Jesus's mission. At the beginning of the Gospel of Luke, chapter three, in the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, yada yada, when Pontius Pilate was governor, Herod was ruler, his brother Philip, la 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 la, um, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And we've just heard in the first two chapters the story of Jesus' um, conception and, G and John's conception and the naming of them and yada yada. Okay, So John was in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The f he's proclaiming the forgiveness of sins outside of the temple, which is a way of saying he thought things were shady in the temple. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. All things about making things level and even, and even keeled and equal, you know, <laughs> fair and, the salvation of God is not about your spirit making it to heaven. It's about things on earth being just. Anyway, we keep reading and John says to the crowds who came out to be baptized to him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Change your ways. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. Abraham, the guy of faith, that's how it gets us in. He's like, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. It's a whole different thing I don't want to talk about right now. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Yes, he was a fire brimstone kind of guy. It's worth noting that he's the guy who comes before Jesus, preparing the way for Jesus. Not some sort of sweet, gentle guy, but someone bringing the fire. The crowds asked him, well, what then should we do? You tell us to repent, as in change our ways. What should we do then? And he says, this is just pay attention to this list, he says. Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. And whoever has food must do likewise. It's pretty basic. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you, idiot. Soldiers, that idiot part isn't in there. Soldiers asked him, And we, what should we do? And he said, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. All of this is about economics. Did you notice that? And the people who are coming to him are the ones involved with the temple in the exploitation of the people in particular up here around Galilee, but he's, a, he's around, he's on Jordan. So the, you know, the people are being exploited by these brood of vipers, right? Tax collectors, soldiers, just the crowds in general. What should we do? Make sure you to take care of each other. That's what you should do. People who are collecting taxes on behalf of Rome and lining their pockets, what should we do? Stop fleecing your neighbors. Soldiers, what should we do? Stop exploiting people, extorting money so that they might be safe. No, stop doing that. that that's what he says. That's it. That is the message. This is about... The people cannot withstand this economic oppression any longer. That's what this is about. It's the opening story of Jesus' mission in the Gospel of Luke.
What about that? Hmm? See you next time.